Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to give you my top five SharePoint workflow templates that are in the Power Automate templates library. So they're free to use, anyone can get to them. Simply go to Power Automate and go to Templates, and in the Search Templates box, just type in the word SharePoint. Now, this will then filter down and show you all the different Power Automate templates that people have built and had verified by Microsoft before they're published publicly for anyone to, to use. And you can sort them by popularity or you can sort by um, names and published times and things like that. Um, so I'm going to show you top five ones which I think have been really useful. Now, a lot of the time with templates, they're not like 100% ready to rock and roll. As in, I mean, they often take a bit of tweaks and changes, but at least it gives you a good idea about how to get something started or even just gives you food for thought of what types of things can be achieved using SharePoint and Power Automate. So the first one that I want to show you is the request manager approval for selected file. Now, this is fairly obvious of why you would want to have this, um, but it's super simple to use this template essentially the trigger for this is for a selected file so all you need to do is specify the the site and the library name what it will then do is get the file properties and it's going to put it inside of a condition which is just uh, simply that the sort of status is not equal to 404 uh, then what it's going to do is it's going to go through if it's true and it's fine it's not it's not erroring it's going to get my profile now these are essentially the kind of connectors which are getting the profile information and from that profile information it can get your line manager now you could obviously update this if you wanted to you could switch out how it's getting the, the manager or you could hard code it to be a specific person for example but i quite like the fact that this is looking up your user profile from your microsoft 365 account is getting the manager field and putting it into this um th this equation once it's then got your manager, um, it can then start um, a, a sort of uh, a, 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 the actual approval process. Again, if it can't get uh, the manager, it's going to go down a termination route and it'll actually notify you to let you know that that has actually failed. Um, so it's always good to build out some failure sort of um, sort of catches there. So if it tries something and it fails, it's got uh, the ability to go back and let you know. So again, these are all kind of just best practices inside of Power Automate. So it's a good way to learn how to structure your Power Automate workflows. Then it's going to go through an approval um, process and it basically is going to pause at that point to wait for an approval. Then it's going to have a condition. So based on the response, if the response is approved, it will then go through and give an approval email back to you to say, yes, it's been approved. And here's the sort of details which have been captured from that approval step above. Or if it's not approved, obviously it must be then rejected. And again, it will send a rejection email with a bit of detail of why. Um, so the comments that have been captured through that process and then it will then finish so it goes from start to finish like with anything in life everything's got a start a middle and an end so the triggering point um, uh, uh, started it off and it's gone all the way through um, and then it'll finish off at the bottom of the workflow here so that's the first of the five workflows the second is once an outlook email is received add it to a sharepoint list now, um, this is very simplistic, um, but I've seen different versions of this workflow. And in fact, I've worked um, a couple of years ago, I worked with a um, law firm, which was actually using um, a bit more of a complex version of this. But essentially what they were doing is they wanted uh, to create tasks in SharePoint, instead of a SharePoint list, for their solicitors when an email was to arrive in a specific shared mailbox so the triggering point was when an email arrives um, and again this could just be for my own e email mailbox or we could swap this out to be a shared mailbox if we wanted to as well then we go and create the item in sharepoint so all we need to do is specify the site address the list name and then um, we would probably want to specify once it once it's got the list we would certainly have certain fields inside of that list that we probably wanted to populate so in our case when we were working with this what i was doing is i was populating say who the the email came from um we even attached the email as an attachment um and then we also had a look up to a customer list so this is obviously 
um, much more complicated than this workflow here. But we had a look up to a customer list, which told us which the customer, who the customer was, and then who the, um, the the lawyer, the solicitor that was working with that account was, so that we could add them and ping them a notification team to let them know um, that the email had come back in. So in this workflow, we've got the email trigger. We're creating the item, we're getting my profile, and then we're sending an email back to myself just to say that uh, an email's come in and we've created an item in a SharePoint list. And as I say, that SharePoint list might be um, a task list or something like that, which is keeping track of um, what's coming through. Um, other times I've seen something similar. I once built a workflow which was analyzing the sentiment of emails. So what we did is we applied that over a support mailbox and we wanted to capture all of the uh, emails that are coming from customers. And then we were using Power Automate to understand the sentiment, whether it was good, positive, bad, negative, if there were swear words that were being used in the emails if there's positive language that was being used and extract all of that and then store it into a SharePoint list and then send a notification. So again, the premise of the workflow is very, very simple, um, but you can then add more steps in the middle to do more advanced things. So that was a second workflow. The third workflow is add a SharePoint list item and post a message to Teams on my, uh, based on a Microsoft form submission. So something that's very common is when a form is submitted, so a Microsoft form, which everyone knows and loves, because they're so simple to create the form. However, there's not much by way of configuration at the other side. Um, I must admit, I don't really like the fact that the way it holds the data inside of Microsoft Forms, it's not particularly easy to get access to or share with other people. So what we would often do if we were building a solution which required a Microsoft form. So another reason why you might use a Microsoft form is because they can be externally shared a lot easier than a form inside of SharePoint. So it might be that the form is even on a website and then when a the form gets submitted, it comes through and the details get passed to a SharePoint list, which is a lot easier for people to get access to. Um, and also to work with um, inside of Power Automate, it's much easier to have that data inside of a SharePoint list. Then um, once we have that, we're then posting a message into a team. So what we need to do is specify the, the team that we want to post into, the channel we want to post into. And actually this template also includes an email as well. So we're, post, we're sending an email um, notification as well. I just wanted to pause there to ask a quick favor. If you're enjoying this video, please like the video, but also subscribe to my channel and turn the alerts on so you can be notified when I post out frequent new SharePoint related videos. Um, if you need any professional help, I also um, can provide consultants uh, services from my team. Um, all you need to do is contact me via the link um, in my bio on my page or via the link inside of this video description. Um, if you're looking for a more advanced SharePoint training, we can also go to our membership tab here. Now my membership is only 99 pence per month, so it's not gonna break the bank, but it'll give you access to exclusive SharePoint training uh, fundamentals, as well as a training course on how to build a SharePoint intranet. Plus also you've got exclusive access to my Q&A section, which will give you priority responses to any SharePoint questions that you might have. And as I say, it's only 99 pence per month, so it's not going to break the bank. So go and check that out. And I'd really appreciate it if you were to support me by um, signing up to that membership. Then the fourth Power Automate workflow, which I think is really useful to know about, is email today's filtered items from a SharePoint list and determined uh, at the sorry, at determined intervals. So this might be something that you do daily. So um, it's the trigger is a reoccurrence. So you could set to say maybe once a day in a certain time zone and start it maybe say seven o'clock in the morning, something like that, and then get the specific items. Now I've seen this used before when I've worked with the likes of hotel chains where they have certain items inside of SharePoint uh, which are like usually like handover checks and things like that um, that need to be done. And if there was anything that was flagged as a fault as part of that, so maybe there wasn't enough bed sheets, for example, or there was something um, that the, the kitchen that, that, that was, wasn't cleaned or um, a toilet block that wasn't cleaned or whatever it was, there was something that was missed and needed to be handed over to the next shift. What would then happen is 
at a certain time period, so the shift handover would happen at eight o'clock in the morning, this workflow would kick in. It would go and get all the SharePoint items that had been um, marked as that they weren't complete. Um, it would then basically, uh, the long story short, go and filter that to, to get all, so it would get all the items on the SharePoint list. It would filter them by a certain condition, which is essentially is not complete, so that they're still uh, needing to be complete. And then it can get my profile and send me an email, or we could post into Teams or some other way that we've got someone to say, here's all the actions which weren't complete. And it's part of the handover um, email that would get sent out to say, these actions need to still be completed and they would be the top priority for the next shift that was picking it up. And then the final, the fifth and final workflow uh, which is on new SharePoint items, create planner task and assign to creator. So it might be, say, for example, um, I've worked with a construction company and they were using a SharePoint list to track the projects that they were working on. Now, they didn't want to use SharePoint um, uh, lists to, for, for their tasks because they wanted all of the features and benefits of using Microsoft Planner. Um, which also they were using Microsoft to do, which integrates with Planner. So it was kind of they wanted an integration from SharePoint to Planner and then Planner they're using uh, to do to manage their day to day kind of tasks. So we used a workflow which is very similar to this. So actually, when an item was created in the projects list, it would get basically the details. So in this case, it's getting the user profile, but it would get the details of the item. So who was the project manager was listed in the item and then you go and create a series of tasks. Now, you can also template tasks as well. So every time they had a new project, there's certain tasks which always had to be complete as part of the onboarding. They set, up, set them up in finance, set up the, the payroll of the staff that they're onboarding for that project and all these different things. It would create the tasks using Power Automate with templates directly into Planner for them to use. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please like. If um, you've got any comments, put them in the comments below. And also, if you need any professional services in terms of helping automate your SharePoint with Power Automate or any other SharePoint needs, contact us today. There's a link in the description below and there's a link in my bio and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.